Peace and assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to Pain and Sorry Life. My name is Natsara Ansari. So today I'm going to continue reading from the book Secrets of Divine Love. Um, in the first video I read the entire first chapter. Today I'm going to start the second chapter but it's really long. It's like um, a little over 40 pages. So I'm not going to read all of it in one video. Um, so I will read from pages 29 to um, the bottom of 45. So chapter 2. Who are you? You are an intentional creation of a perfect God. You are not a product of chance or luck. As the Quran says, we did not create the heavens and the earth and everything between between them playfully. Chapter 21, verse 16. There is no accidental life. Allah wrote your story with the pen of mercy, poured his love into every cell that dances and twirls inside of you, and blew his spirit into your mold of clay, making you a bridge between heaven and earth. Al-Quran 15, 29. Like a gentle breeze, God breathes the light of his love within your soil of dirt, bringing to life what was once dead earth. Al-Quran 30, 19. You are far more beautiful than mirrors can sing about. You are far too intricate for language to weave into words. Because you are the product of a divine love that is so holy and infinite that finite hands fall short in painting your truth. The love of God purposely overflowed to create you and everything in existence. The God who made the stars, the seas, the mountains, and its peaks, the universe and its galaxies felt this world would be incomplete without you and without me. Do you see how you are a puzzle piece in the whole? How without you there would be a whole? Your body it's not just a clay tent that you live in. It's a piece of the universe you have been given. You are not a small star. You are a reflection of the entire cosmos. Can you hear the big bang in your heart? 80 times a minute, God knocks on the doors of your chest to remind you that he has never left and that he is closer to you than a juggler vein in your neck. Al-Quran 50:16. Every moment is divinely blessed. For this very moment, God is blowing the breath of life through the eight billion different human chests. You are not just stardust and dirt. You are a reflection of God's beauty on earth. You are not this mortal body that death will one day take. You are an everlasting spirit held in the mortal embrace of clay. You are not a human being meant to be spiritual. You are a spiritual being living this human being miracle. That is That was written by a poet named Aru Bazak. Who you are to God. You are not just the sum of your success, subtracted by your failures. Your worth is not just an equation of how you can offer to the world of how... Your worth is not just an equation of how much you can offer to the world. Your value does not just come from what you give, say, or do. There's more to you than just output. The sun doesn't have to run laps around the horizon. The days do not have to pass to purchase your worth. You are not worth it in some future plane. You are not worthy only in the innocence of your past because it is not what you have done or do that makes you worthy. Your work does not come just by your doing. It comes through the perfect God who created you. Stop calculating your worth with finite numbers when you were created by an infinite God who brought you to life with an everlasting spirit of light. Stop dividing who you are by the, denominate, by the denominator of other people's opinions. Remember, Infinity divided by one num by any number is still infinite. Remember forever cannot be reduced no matter how much you subtract. Remember you are not currency to fall and rise in value. You do not own yourself. 
to dictate what price you are worthy of being sold. Stop pricing God's merchandise. Like a flawless emerald will not require a beautiful setting to dictate its worth. The value of your spirit is intrinsic because it belongs to God. You are not defined by the opinions of men, by mirrors, or by compliments. Although your sins can veil your heart from fully witnessing God, nothing you, can, nothing you do can change how God sees you. Your sins and scars can never remove God's presence from your heart. Because regardless of who you are or who you have been, God's mercy will always encompass you. Your value is not defined by worldly labels. Because although God created this world for you, he says, I created you for myself. Al-Quran 2041 Our work on earth is not to become something different, but to awaken from the illusion that we are separate from what we seek. We already carry, carry faith within us. Our spirits are and always will be communion with God. In communion with God. The human soul was not created to become perfect, but to be aware of its completion and its connection with a higher power. Enlightenment is when a wave realizes it is the ocean. And that is by a Zen master named Thich Nhat Hanh. It is not only through our striving that we, that we spiritually progress, but when we surrender everything that prevents us from seeing that beneath the dust of forgetfulness, we already are what we seek to become. We already are loved by God. You wander from room to room, hunting for the diamond necklace that is already around your neck. Rumi. It is not a surprise then that in Arabic the word for a human being is insan, which many scholars suggest is derived from the root words nisyan, which means forgetfulness, and unsia, which means intimacy, to love, to be loved, and to become close to. At the very root of being human, we can see that we were not created to find God, but rather to remember and return to the intimate relationship we already have with Him. Our journey on earth is not just to God, it is from God, with God, and into the love of God. The path to God is less of a spiritual path and more of a spiritual undressing of all that prevents you from seeing that in this very moment God is with you wherever you are. Al Quran 57 4. The infinite faces of God. Everything on earth points to God. Everything here has a divine fragrance. As the Quran says, we will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. Al Quran 41 53. Confirming the idea that a divine signpost resides at the core of all creations, and an underlying unity exists among all manifested multiplicity. As Allah says, the heavens and the earth were joined together as one united piece, and then we parted them. Al-Quran 2130 The Quran says that you were united with all of humankind within the embrace of a single soul before you were ever given a separate human existence. Al-Quran 39.6 In essence, God is telling us that everything seen and unseen in existence comes from a single origin. Just as the iron in your blood was made from the fusion of stars and your bones carry the dust of galaxies beyond, you were not only made in heaven, you were made from the heavens. You are not merely living in the universe, you are living as a part of the universe. Just how infinite colors blossom from the light of a single sun, call it an atom or an atom, everything was once one. By the poet Arul Bazak. The human being is a, is a microcosm of the mi macrocosm, the bridge between heaven and earth, both with a mortal body and an everlasting spirit. 
both incline to goodness and incline to evil. Al-Quran 91, 7-10 It is the dual nature of man that allows him to be the perfect receptacle of God's qualities, which is why Allah has chosen us to be his representatives of love upon this earth. Even though the angels are in constant worship and witnessing of God, their perfection and lack of free will prevents them from experiencing the entirety of God's qualities. After all, how can you experience forgiveness if you never make a mistake? If you did not sin, Allah will replace you with people who would sin and then will seek the forgiveness of Allah and He would forgive them. The Prophet Muhammad We human beings are given the trust of free will and intellect so that as a result of that freedom of choice, we could come to know and experience God's love. Allah says in the Quran, we offered the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, but they declined to bear it and, f and feared it, and the human being o undertook it. Indeed, he was unjust and ignorant. Al-Quran 33, 72. Our ignorance of God, coupled with our ego's inclination towards greediness, makes us humans often unjust and unwilling to rightfully bear the holy responsibility of being God's just representatives on earth. The status God has granted the human being is not something we should feel entitled to, but a gift we should feel grateful for being given the opportunity to manifest. The Honor of the Human Being the Quran begs us to reflect on how respected we are by God by asking, Don't you see that Allah has subjected to you everything in the heavens and in the earth and made complete to you his favors, bestowed his grace upon you, outwardly and inwardly? Al-Quran 31.20 Despite all that are given by God, there are still days that our freedom leads us to despair. As we attempt to swim, swim against the current of God's will, feeling in the friction between what we want and what Allah knows we need. Despite all of our achievements and successes, we still ask ourselves, how come I never feel good enough? How come no matter what I accomplish, I am never fully, fully satisfied? We often do not feel good enough because we cannot reach true peace contentment and satisfaction separate from God. It's not through our actions, but through returning to God that we become enough. The hole we carry inside that we so desperately long to fill comes from the experience of what's being unified with all of existence. After all, how can you long for oneness if you have only ever been a separate body? How can you long for perfection if you have never experienced it? How can you long for an all How can you long for an all encompassing love if you have never tasted it? I'm a prisoner. If a prisoner had not lived outside, he would not detest the dungeon. That was what Rumi said. Our longing for something that this world has not been able to fulfill is the greatest evidence for a world beyond this realm. The Quran reminds us of a subtle reality where God planted the seeds of faith, love, and unity in the fertile hearts of all of humankind, known as the covenant of a last. In a pre-eternal realm, before this world as we know it, every soul that would one day manifest into an earthly form was asked by Allah. Am I not your Lord? This, this soup of souls vibrated into a symphony of affirmation as every single being replied, Yes, yes, we testify to the singularity of God. As a result of this covenant, it can be said that at the soul level, every person, regardless of conscious belief, is fully aligned with the divine. Al-Quran 7 172. As a result of God's unconditional love, faith is your divinely gifted birthright. Just as we cannot control our heartbeats or when our cells divide, our spirits are planted in the soil of God consciousness 
whether or not we choose to water the seeds. Islam sees belief in the singularity of God as an innate part of what it means to be human. This is why the declaration of faith is seen as the beginning of our journey to fulfilling our purpose on earth. The Fithra and the Innate Goodness of Man The innate alignment with the divine that resides at the heart of being human is often called the primordial the primordial the primordial essence, or referred to in Arabic as Amfitra. The word fitra comes from a root word meaning to split or being f or bring forth. This implies that our work on this earth is to split the shell of our ego and bring forth the divine seeds of God. This implies that our work on this earth is to split the shell of our ego and bring forth the divine seeds God has already planted in the garden of our spirits through the generosity of his love. The fitra is the innate deposition to believe in God, worship him, and believe in his oneness. The Prophet Muhammad said that all children are born in the inclination to worship God and live a life and surrender to the divine. If left alone, a child's natural inclination to believe in God will continuously manifest. When someone follows a path rejecting divine love and instigating evil, it is not a result of his nature, but because of the influence of his parents or the environment in which he was raised. Despite the Quran consistently telling the believer to respect their parents, God also says that we have commanded people to honor their parents. But if they urge you to, to associate with me what you have no knowledge of, then do not obey them. To me is your return, and I will inform you about what you used to do. Al-Quran 29, 8. Regardless of what our parents or any other person chooses to believe, the fitra or belief in God's oneness, Tawheed, is part of the hardware of all human beings. While the software of our minds can be encoded in different ways based on life experience and environment, the hardware of the fitra cannot be changed. As the Quran says, stand firm and true in your devotion to the religion. This is the natural disposition, disposition fitra, God instilled in humankind. Al-Quran 3030. 30. In our natural state of being, we recognize God's light because we carry an imprint of this light within our spirit. In essence, faith is not setting aside rationality, but rather returning to who you truly are and have always been. This is why many mystics have said that our goal on earth is not to submit to, metaphysical, to a metaphysical mountain of spirituality, but rather to return to our original childlike state of fitra and purity. Rumi describes the importance of blossoming our innate faith and manifesting our purpose on earth through the following metaphor. One thing must not be forgotten. Forget all else, but remember this, and you'll have no regrets. Remember and be concerned with everything else, but ignore this one thing, and you'll have done nothing. It is just as if a king had sent you to another country to carry out a specific task. You go and perform a hundred other tasks, but if you have not performed that particular task, it is as though you have done nothing at all. Rumi. Our task is to become a holy tree of loving kindness and to share the faithful fruits of our fitra with the entire world. It is only when we truly believe in God and submit to Him that we are able to manifest our greatest potential as representatives of God's love on earth. Adam and Eve and the Devil The story of Adam and Eve is not an ancient myth. It is our story. We were created from dust and water and sent to this world not only to love and worship God and return to heaven, 
but also to become a manifestation of heaven on earth by reflecting God's qualities of love and mercy upon all creation. As the Prophet Muhammad salam, said, adorn yourself with divine qualities. Both men and women are called to be mirrors of God on earth and to work together to create harmony and peace for all people. Just as a pomegranate seed cannot grow into a tree without soil, and so you cannot birth from itself pomegranate fruit without a seed, the divine masculine and divine feminine complement one another on the path of blossoming the soul. Men and women are not physically identical, but they are equal in value in the eyes of God, for the soul has no gender. As the Prophet Muhammad salam, says, Verily, women are the twin halves of men. In fact, the word for Eve in Arabic is the same as the Hebrew word Hawa, which comes from a root word that means source of life. In essence, every time we reference Eve, we are reminded that although the prophets of God that were mentioned in the Quran were men, without women there would be no prophets born into this world. This is why women are seen as the bridges of creation between heaven and earth. The Quran does not just honor the holiness of both men and women as the chosen representatives of God on earth, but also teaches how to overcome our greatest enemy, the devil. The devil, or Satan, in Arabic is called Shaitan, and may also be referred to as Iblis. The word Iblis is considered to be the devil's actual name and originates from a root word that means to give up hope, to despair, to be hopeless. In essence, Iblis is the one who, who incites hopelessness by attempting to deceive us into believing that we are bad and unloved based on our actions. In traditional Islamic theology, Iblis is not seen as a fallen angel because angels do not have free will and so they cannot sin or disobey Allah. The Quran describes the shaitan as a jinn, a creation of God made from smokeless fire that is part of the Ghaib or unseen realm. Although we cannot physically see the jinn, similar to human beings, they have been given free will. In other words, there are both good and bad jinn. The shaitan is not the opposite of God, but a creation of God. Whereas some spiritual paths suggest there are separate gods of light and darkness that balance one another, the Quran states that Allah is one, has no equal opposites, and possesses infinite qualities of pure goodness that perfectly complement one another. The shaitan has no power, except for what Allah allows him to have. Al-Quran 38, 82 to 83. Even though the shaitan is considered a clear enemy to man, Al-Quran 17, 53, his creation still has a holy purpose. Just as finding the hole in the leaking boat is a blessing because it shows us what needs to be patched, the divine mercy behind the existence of the shaitan is that he shows us where our hearts are not in alignment with God. In fact, the 20th century spiritual master, Sheikh Sidi Muhammad al-Jamal, refers to the shaitan as the fire at the gate of the garden because his purpose is to confront and purify our base qualities. As the Quran says, Satan th threatens you with poverty and orders you to immorality, while Allah promises, promises you forgiveness from him and bounty. And Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. Al-Quran 2, 268. Some mystics call the shaitan the guide of darkness or the gatekeeper of heaven, because it is his voice that tempts us toward the lower qualities of the ego, such as envy, lust, greed, and jealousy, showing us the places we need to polish and purify. It is in experiencing distance from Allah that we begin to see the priceless blessing of divine proximity. Although the shaitan has his place in creation, it is important to remember that the shaitan is an evil liar, so we should not take his existence lightly. 
Iblis was not just a typical jinn. Narrations from spiritual sages throughout Islamic history have declared that Iblis had worshipped God for a thousand years with such fervor and passion that he was elevated to be among the angels. Despite not actually being an angel, Iblis enjoyed his celestial rank until one day Allah declared that he had created a new creation by the name of Adam to be his representative on earth. Allah blew his spirit into Adam and commanded the angels and Iblis to bow before his new creation. Iblis looked at the hollow clay form of Adam and refused the order of God, declaring, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. Al-Quran 7.12 Just as the match must be struck to unveil the fire it carries within, the creation of Adam created enough friction for the fire of arrogance that was present but not yet manifested within Iblis to be lit. Whereas the angels inquired about Adam's creation, they still followed God's command and bowed before the breath of God within Adam. But Iblis was unable to see the reflection of the divine hidden beyond the human being's physical form. The devil's assumption that birth comes from physical substance is a mistake we are still making today. In a way, you could say that Satan was the first documented racist. In reality, our worth is not based on wealth, fame, race, or outer beauty, but based on our good actions and the perfect God who intentionally created us and the seeds of goodness we sow in the garden of our life. Our experience of Allah, ourselves, and the world depends on the polished state of our hearts. As the Quran says, And whoever guards himself for Allah, he shall cover over his evil deeds and grant him a vast reward. Al-Quran 65 In other words, our worth is innate, but we can only experience our deep worthiness through the door of good action. The Quran says, The most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most, is the most righteous of you. Al-Quran 49.13 since we know that God is unaffected by our actions, we can see this verse as implying that when we do good, we unveil the nobility and honor that God has already entrusted to every human being. The devil did not understand that what Allah gave to Adam could not be ruined through sin because our innate worthiness is not earned through good actions. Adam was honored before he performed a single good deed because his initial honor as a human being was not based on his actions, but based, but based on the breath of God, ooh, blown into him and the innate goodness, Fithra, that God planted within him. As the story goes, after the angels bowed before Adam, Allah said to him, O Adam, dwell, you and your wife, in the garden and eat freely from it, both of you, but do not come near to this tree lest you become one of the oppressors of yourselves and others. Al-Quran 2.35 Adam and Eve were given all of paradise, but the devil was determined to prove that the human creation was unworthy of being so highly honored by God. So he whispered to them, Your Lord has forbidden this tree to you only to prevent you from becoming angels or immortals. And he swore to the two, to the two of them, Truly I am a seer, Truly, I am a sincere advisor to you. Al Quran 7 20 to 21. After Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree, Allah said, Get down from the state of innocence and be, each of you, shaitan and human, an enemy to the other, having on earth your dwelling and pleasure for a while. Al Quran 7 24. At this point in the revelation, we see that the real difference between the devil and Adam comes down to accountability. When Adam and Eve disobey God, they do not blame God or the devil. They blame themselves and seek God's forgiveness through the following prayer. Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. 
If you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be among the losers. Al-Quran 7.23 Eating from the forbidden tree was a means for Adam and Eve to receive the teaching of repentance. Unlike the devil, whose arrogance was met with divine wrath, Adam and Eve's humility was met with divine mercy, forgiveness, and guidance. When the devil disobeyed God, he blamed God and responded by seeking revenge on humankind by saying, Now that you have made me go astray, I shall lie in ambush for them along your straight path. I will come to them from before them and from behind them, and on their right and on their left, and you will not find most of them grateful. Al-Quran 16-17 Aside from unveiling the devil's arrogance, what is incredibly profound about this statement is that the devil is telling us that the root of disbelief and moral depravity is ingratitude. The deeper dimensions of this verse unveil the secret tactics of the devil and ultimately teach us how to overcome these temptation, temptations through gratitude. Notice how the shaitan say that he will ambush us on the straight path. Just as a thief only robs a house with the expensive goods, the shaitan comes strongest after those who are on the spiritual path and have fostered a sense of faith. Another commentary on the verse suggests that when the shaitan says he will come from behind us, it means he would delude us re regarding our divine origin, suggesting we are nothing but an accidental creation of a godless universe. This can also suggest that he will pull us away from the present moment into a past we cannot change by fanning the flames of regret and inciting us with feelings of despair. When the shaitan says he will come from before us, this implies that he will delude us regarding the day of judgment, attempting to convince us that there will be no accountability in the future for our actions, both good and bad. Then it is said that the shaitan will come from our right and left, trying to lure us into error through our desires and beliefs. Note that the shaitan did not say he will approach us from above, as only revelation descends from above. He also cannot approach us from below, because when we bow our heads down toward the earth, we represent the station of surrender and humility, whereas the shaitan represents the station of arrogance. This teaches us a deep secret. When we turn to revelation and are in a state of humility, we are protected from the temptations of the shaitan. After all, the shaitan himself says to Allah, to Allah, By your might, I will surely mislead them all, except among them your chosen servants. Al-Quran 38, 82-83 The chosen ones are the ones God blesses with the qualities of faith, sincerity, and humble gratitude. The Power of Gratitude the English word gratitude comes from the Greek word gratis, which means thankful and pleasing, but also is said to be loosely related to the word grace. In essence, gratefulness is directly related to Allah because it is through the doorway of gratitude that we experience Allah's grace and generosity. As Allah profoundly states, If you are grateful, I will surely give you more. Al-Quran 14.7 True gratitude or shukra is not based on the circumstance, on your circumstance, but based on the state of your spirit. Our gratitude does not make God more generous. Rather, our gratitude makes us more receptive to receiving all that God continuously gives to us. Being in a state of gratitude is remembering that God loved us before we ever loved Him. When we are grateful, we are vibrating at a higher frequency with more clarity and more awareness of our innate alignment with Allah. Gratitude is not an emotion. It is more a state of the mind and heart. States of mind are different than emotions because they are like channels on a radio that we can consciously choose to dial into. 
When we are only thankful when we get what we want, then our gratitude is a product of our ego. True gratitude blossoms through the practice of praising the divine regardless of the outcome we desire. Sincere gratitude is birthed from the womb of humility because it is only when we truly believe that God is the best of planners, Al-Quran 8.30, that our gratefulness is no longer dependent on our outer circumstances, which constantly change, but on a God who is unchanging and eternal. After all, if the prophet Jonah can glorify God if, even after being swallowed by a well, then we too can look beyond our current circumstances and show gratitude for the infinite blessings God is continuously bestowing on us. upon us. Al-Quran 37, 143 to 144. In fact, the mystics even say, we must be grateful for being grateful because it is by the blessing of Allah that we are grateful to him to begin with. When we are in a state of shukra or gratefulness, we are connecting ourselves to the divine name Ashakur, which means the most grateful. When we are grateful, we are closer to our Lord. When we are in a state of gratitude, it is always of more value than what we are grateful for because the gift will perish, but the giver of the gift is eternal. This is why when the Prophet Islam, wife asked him why he would undergo so much hardship in prayer and repentance if Allah had already forgiven him, the Prophet Islam, replied by saying, Ufala Akuna Abdan Shakura, which means, should I not be a thankful servant? In other words, the Prophet salam, was not grateful to Allah to gain something, but rather he was grateful because he could not imagine responding to Allah's infinite mercy, grace, love, and forgiveness in any other way. As Rumi says, Thanksgiving is sweeter than bounty itself. One who cherishes gratitude does not cling to the gift. Thanksgiving is the true meat of Allah's bounty. The bounty is its shell, for thanksgiving carries you to the heart of the beloved. The essence of gratitude is experienced through the acknowledgement and appreciation of the gifts Allah has given us. When we appreciate and use his resources and gifts in ways that please him, we are given a greater means of experiencing him and his divine names. We manifest true gratitude when we use our eyes to see God's sign, signs. When we use our ears to hear God's words. When we use our tongue to remember our Lord. When we use our hands to give charity. When we use our feet to walk the path of truthfulness, love, kindness, justice, and mercy. As Imam Ali says, when some blessings come to you, do not drive them away through thankfulness. Gratitude is the opposite of enlightenment and self-management. True, true gratitude blossoms from the soil of complete trust and surrender to God's perfect will. Alhamdulillah, or all praise and glory belongs to Allah, is the first thing that Adam expressed when he spoke. And Alhamdulillah is among the first words the people of paradise will say. Al-Quran 7.43 If gratitude towards God is the pathway to righteousness and eternal salvation, then we could argue that ingratitude is one of the greatest enemies of faith. This is why one of the ways you can gauge your station of spiritual excellence in Islam is to examine your level of gratefulness. One of the ways the Quran shows us the importance of gratitude is by showing us the detrimental effects of ingratitude. In fact, one of the lessons that the story of the shaitan shows us is that if you outwardly worship God but inwardly have an ungrateful heart that carries pride, you can f fall from the highest heavens to the lowest hell. The arrogance and greed of the shaitan shifted his focus on the eternal gift giver to the perishable gift, making his obedience dependent on getting what he thought he deserved. Iblis was already in the garden already close to Allah, 
and yet his ingratitude to God and envy of Adam resulted in him being cast out of paradise. Whoever has an Adam's way of pride in his heart will not enter paradise, the prophet Muhammad. Since Allah is the king of oneness and pride and arrogance are states of forgetfulness of Allah, which create separations, the prideful of def the prideful by definition cannot exist before God's singular presence. Sin and forgetfulness. Since God declares in the Quran, remembrance of Allah is the greatest. Al Quran twenty nine forty five. Being forgetful of the divine is considered a significant spiritual misstep. As Imam Ali says, your sickness is from you, but you do not perceive it, and your remedy is within you, but you do not sense it. You presume you are a small entity, but within you is enfolded the entire universe. What you seek is within you, if only you reflect. Here Imam Ali is reminding us that the root problem of humanity is forgetfulness of our innate goodness, fitra, and pre-eternal connection to the divine love of God. In the Bible, the Greek word used for sin is hamartia, which comes from the sport of archery, translating to missing the mark. This word beautifully depicts how, when we sin, in addition to turning away from God, we are also missing the whole point of what it means to be human. In other words, sin can be seen as a symptom of the human being losing sight of their primordial goodness, fitra. Since the goodness of man is a reflection of God's eternal and perfect goodness, our fitra cannot be changed through human sin. Just as clouds cannot affect the presence and power of the sun's light, but can alter our experience of the in intensity of the light, sin can veil our perception of our inner goodness, but it cannot change it. God gave every human being spiritual eyes to be able to experience and see his signs. Since it is God's generosity and not our obedience to God's laws and rules that gave us spiritual vision, our sins do not have the power to take away what our good deeds never earned us in the first place. However, it is important to remember that our actions have the power to veil us from the gifts that God has given us. Our sins can become a blindfold over our spiritual eyes. Repeatedly sinning without polishing our hearts through the practice of repentance, Tawbah, can prevent us from seeing God's beauty. Al Quran 18, 101. Our sins can turn us away from the light of God's eternal love, making us live in a darkness we subject ourselves to through our own doing. Similar to how when you turn away from the sun, you experience darkness. When you turn away from God's love through sinful actions and forgetfulness, you experience a darkness that feels like wrath. This is precisely why the Quran repeatedly illustrates that it is not God who oppresses us, but rather we who oppress ourselves. This distinction is very important. God is not a human being with changing emotions. So all variability we experience in relationship with God comes not from Him, but from our experience of love, of His love. Although obedience to God's commands and performing good deeds are two ways we experience the love of God, our deeds on their own do not make us worthy of God, because nothing can be worthy of the one who has given us everything and needs nothing. In truth, we are only worthy of God's love because of God's own generosity. Our worthiness comes from God alone, but our choices and our actions are the medium by which we actualize God's gifts. As the Quran clearly states, man can have nothing but what he strives for. Al Quran 53:39. Our experience of the hereafter is in part determined by our actions because our actions help to polish the mirror of our hearts, which either reject or receive all that God has given us. As the Quran says, complete 
compete with each other in performing good deeds. Al Quran 2 148. Because those who believe and do good work, they are the people of paradise. In it they abide eternally. Al Quran 2 82. While good deeds and sincerity serving others helps to align our spirits with God, without purification of the heart, there is the veil that prevents us from experiencing the harvest of good action. As the Prophet Muhammad said, Allah does not look at your appearance or wealth, but rather he looks at your hearts and actions. The Quran does not just call us to outwardly follow rules, but also calls us to integrate God consciousness on the deepest levels of our hearts. The Quran says that only he or she will prosper that brings to Allah a sound heart. Al Quran 2689. It is only when outer obedience unites with sincere inner submission that the eyes of the heart awaken to witness and receive the love of God. On those who believe and perform righteous deeds, the Lord of mercy will bestow love for them. Al Quran 1996. It is in turning towards the divine, being of service to others, and removing the veils of the ego that we begin to feel the love that God has always been pouring upon us. So that is the end of the first part of chapter two. I'm going to lubricate <laughs> with some water and some tea. And then inshallah, I will start the next video to finish the next part so that at least chapter two will be finished. Um, and anyone who is interested may be able to listen to um, the whole chapter in its entirety. So with that, assalamu alaikum. My, my apologies once again for any um, misspoken words or hiccups. And um, see you soon.